demonizing losing has been the great misstep of the last 40 years. You are creating disproportionate vulnerabilities for your child. If you are a parent that does everything out of their way to make sure your child doesn't lose, meaning you make pretend they beat you in things, you put them into leagues that don't have keep score, you are a proponent of eighth place trophies, you are teaching your child that losing is so bad that we must avoid it at all costs. In a world where most of your life is about tons of micro losing and occasional macro wins. Gary Vaynerchuk is in the house, one of the most prolific entrepreneurs, definitely has inspired me as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur since the early 2000s, also an investor and invests in things that matter to him, and a thought leader of our time with a passion for topics like the internet, storytelling, marketing, but also leadership, character development, and parenting. And I do believe, Gary, that you want to make the world a better place. So I believe that you see trends. You see trends ahead of the curve, which is why you are on the ground floor of things like Twitter, Facebook, Uber, and I probably why you launched V Friends, which for our guests out there that may not know is an entertainment company. And today we are excited to get to talk to you about the launch of your first children's book. So to that end, I'm going to hold it up for people at home to see. In true Gary fashion, Gary V fashion, it is super unique, guys. It is two stories in one. It's got that flip book thing going. And I believe you did that for perspective taking. You believe in people learning and studying and understanding one another and themselves. Can you, can we just start with that right there about the importance of of why you did what you did and how you did it. First of all, thank you for having me. Congrats on everything going on in your world. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think modern parenting, much like politics, I think has become too left or right, too blue or red. And so this brand I'm building is Pokemon meets Sesame Street. So there's a lot of collectability and a lot of competition, but there's incredible intent Um, on the Sesame Street side to really leave a good impact on the world. And I think in a world of red and blue parenting, I think purple is the magic. Mm. And I think parents are struggling to find balance. And so the, the book is formatted in a unique way of telling stories from opposite directions because the story of patient pig and eager eagle, I think can really help a lot of five, six, seven, eight year olds, which is Patience is remarkable, but too much patience leads to non-action, laziness, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and indifference and things that I'm sure most parents don't want. And then eagerness, tenacity, ambition, you know, are incredibly amazing. I'm a big fan. But if you do it in a sloppy, reckless way, that also won't work out. And so, you know, I'm I'm very passionate about what I'm building with Friends and the collectible side digital collectibles, the trading cards, the stickers, the pins, very Disney, very Pokemon. It's going great for anyone that's into that stuff and wants their kids collecting something that's positive. Go to eBay and type in V friends, V E E friends. I think you'll be really taken aback how hot the brand is. And then this summer and fall are really huge for the brand. This kid's book comes out obviously now. And this fall we have cartoons coming out on YouTube kids from Moonbug, the people who made Coco Melon, and so have a lot of ambition for the cartoons. And, you know, yeah, I'm looking, you know, you're right. I have incredible hopes and dreams for myself, selfish. Um, but I also have incredible energy towards leaving a positive impact before I'm gone and and giving back. And those selfless behaviors make me tick. And um, this is a fun project because I think there's a little bit of both, right? Obviously, if you build a company as big as Marvel or 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 Lucas or or you know Sesame Street that's good <laughs> um, for business but I I think that making content for any age group I've accomplished a lot as an individual for teenage and twenties thirties forties fifties sixties seventies I'm proud of you know how I've amassed fifty million followers you know yeah um, but I saw a huge opportunity to make an impact on the generation that really in a lot of ways what was very obvious to me as I was getting the direct messages and emails was, wow, there's a lot of work 
that needs to be done. Once you're 20, 30, 40, there's a lot of therapy, meditation, exercise. There's a lot that needs to unwind some of the foundational things. So I'm trying to leave a little contribution of maybe helping parents along the way create the foundations that are good. And I think balance is the great missing ingredient right now in our society. Wonderfully said. So many interesting facets there. The word balance, I've heard you talk about balance before. I do think it's really misunderstood. I used to call balance a four-letter word when I was a young mom because everyone was like, oh, you know, I want to be balanced. And I'm like, you know, some phases of life are full of chaos and being with what is, is a certain sort of balance. So actually to your, to your point, I'm sorry to jump in, but you just got me excited. I think the balance is the capacity to react to the fact that every facet of life is not in balance. I think the, the great reality of balance or meeting in the middle is, you know, can you find that place in reacting to the reality of the situation? Meaning when your kid falls off the monkey bars and cracks their head, (laughs) like, you know, it's not so easy to be like zenned out and like, you know, like, you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into balance. And more importantly, here's the big one. Once you realize there is no balance, meaning let's talk about work-life balance that I'm sure a lot of parents think about. By who? Who's the judge and the jury? One of my favorite things to say that my contemporaries is judge the judger. Right. So, you know, I just watch people who are like, Gary, you should really do this. I'm like, you've never built a business. You know, like. Very Zen, very Zen. You're talking about non judgment and the freedom to be with what is, by definition, is balance because you can show up to whatever is around you. That's true power and freedom. And it's so well said. I think about it as counter punching. I'm prepared every day in a really emotional way to deal with the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. You know, nothing is guaranteed. I was very affected by my parents losing a parent early in their life. My mom lost her mom at five. Mm. My dad lost his dad at 15. And it was, I was the oldest son of an immigrant family born in the old country. I was born in the USSR. And I just remember fearing losing a parent my whole life, which is an unusual way to see the world. But it was such a currency. And once I got to 18, there was some level of like extreme gratitude that it didn't happen. And I think, you know, gratitude has been a very big part of my world. As a matter of fact, this little character right here, that's Gratitude Gorilla. Aww. And I think, I, I do think, you know, I said on a podcast the other day, actually, we'll do it right here, right now. I'd love for everyone to take a very, very deep breath, as deep as you possibly can. Do this with me, if you don't mind. Smile and mean it. And then just say, when I'm 90, this won't matter. Mm. When that's, I'm to me, that's perspective. Or, right? Insert blank. I want everyone out there listening, fill in that blank. Don't let that opportunity fill you. And, and by the way, when I say it won't matter at 90, I go very extreme. I don't mean that you're doing the things that I most worry about, which is like some parent made fun of the car you drive and you feel insecure about your financial status or your sister's kids get straight A's and yours has dyslexia and you like people care about things that really don't matter. But I actually mean when you're 90, even the great challenges some people are listening to right now, there are people listening right now, as you know, that have been contemplating divorce for five years because they're unhappy in their marriage. There are people that are listening to this great podcast right now who had a parent diagnosed with a terminal illness in the last 60 days. There are people here that just found out something about their child that devastates them that they've been doing behind their back. I'm talking about real stuff. And that stuff, when you're 90, will be put into perspective. And so for me, I don't want people to wait to 90 to have a proper perspective. I want them to enjoy life now. The odds of being a human being, according to modern scientists, is 400 trillion to one. The odds of being a human being? The odds of actually becoming a human being, according to modern science, is as four- opposed to a human doing, in, in as opposed to not becoming a human being. Okay, wow. To, be, to being <laughs> a sperm and an egg and never seeing the day of life. Oh, okay, wow. Hundred trillion, yeah. four hundred trillion. 
I mean, your mom could have decided to get an extra glass of wine and go to sleep that night and you would not be living. I have a headache. (laughs) (laughs) And so I don't know, like I just, especially in these times where unfortunately mainstream media, social media, because that's a reflection of human behavior, most people are selling fear and unhappiness. That's what I love about your work. Fundamentally, you talk about all this business stuff, you are about love, you are about positivity, and you challenge, you are a change maker because you challenge the status quo and you do it from the heart, what is true for you, what is authentic. I can't let you go without asking you to address the topic of accountability because mm, love you. resilience and raising resilient kiddos. So caring, confident, yes, resilient, not bubble wrapping, sending a child out into the world so that they never feel pain. They are, they're, they're, oh, God, I love right? you for this. Parents, my friends, I have a 15 and 11 year old, soon to be 12. I speak from a place of living it, but I speak from a place of getting, I just want everyone to hear this, tens of thousands of messages from kids 15 to 25 a month. Wow. Parenting, demonizing, losing has been the great misstep of the last 40 years. We can sit here and blame social media because we don't want to be accountable as parents. But when you don't fight your kids' battles, if you are a parent that listens right now and you go to school to yell at a parent to give a better grade for your child, you are creating disproportionate vulnerabilities for your child. Truth. If you are a parent that does everything out of their way to make sure your child doesn't lose, meaning you make pretend they beat you in things, you put them into leagues that don't have keep score. You are a proponent of eighth place trophies. You are teaching your child that losing is so bad that we must avoid it at all costs in a world where most of your life is about tons of micro losing and occasional macro wins. You got it. You got it. You're, you're, you're on point with Generation Mindful. The families here are about connection, not control, and experience. Kids living their lives, feeling their feelings. Too many families, they hold this idea of happiness up so high that nothing else can live. But my- I I actually think, I'm sorry to interrupt. I actually think happiness is the achievement of happiness, content, joy. Joy, The path is a path led with full accountability. Joy and ease is the definition of mindfulness. It's a little different than happy. There's a lot of grit and a lot of living and a lot of chaos, I would submit. And it may be a and, little- and, and you know what's funny about this conversation? I'm sure you know this. Some of these things become semantical, right? People use words interchangeably. Right. Here's what I'm going to say. Skinning your knee is good. Getting into a schoolyard fight is good. Being outside and figuring out how to fix the conflict without a parent or a nanny is good. Getting a C minus is good. Like these are great things that we have just decided because we are a maturing empire that has so much prosperity. You know, our great grandparents didn't have the luxury of fighting teachers. They were worried about the Great Depression. They were worried about world wars. We have got it so damn good that we've gotten too deep into our kids' business. We need them to breathe a little bit. We need them to feel pain a little bit. And that is just the journey of life. I'll said parenting used to not be a verb. That's how I heard it said. When did it become a verb? It's it's now it's an action. It's a verb. It it was never, we were parents. It was a role. And we believe in parenting as a relationship. So I just want to encourage everyone out there to understand what's available to you in terms of the V friends. This entire line is coming out. This is just book one. And we want to have you back with everyone because- value this conversation. Can I, can I and, leave one thing that might really hit for this crew? Yeah. We, this is why I love meet me in the middle. A lot of us have decided to become our friends with our kids instead of their parents because our parents weren't friendly enough to us. So we went from left to right or right to left or blue to red or red to blue, but you actually have to go to the middle over correcting to the extreme of the opposite of what you are dealing with, with what your resentment towards your parents is, is what's going to cause you 
the missteps that lead to a lot of anxiety in your older years when your children are 20s, 30s, and 40s and start doing the messages I read, which is, Gary, my parents screwed up. They took care of everything for me and now I'm 26 and I don't know how to do anything. Most kids are not accountable in their 20s. So they are going to level extreme blame on you. You've got to teach them to stand on their own two feet. Stop fighting for them. Thank you for that. You just defined generational cycles for us. It's a pendulum. We start here, we end up over here. That's not the goal. When you talk about the word balance, I want everyone to see what Gary just said. It's the pendulum that becomes still, it rests in the center. And Gary, you're, you're really bringing that. I know I can't hog up much more of your time, but I want you to know we are doing TED Talks for kids. They're called Teddy Talks. And we'd love to have you on there talking about it. Happy, happy to do it. This is a passion of mine. Please do Thank that. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you so you. much. Bye-bye. Have you back.